How's it going, everybody? How's it going? Yeah. Like we said, thanks for coming. Um, and so Scribs and I are just going to have a chat. And you're all here. Thank you. Um, let's talk about Scribs Riley. So yeah. about a year, year and a half ago, he came through to our LA offices. And we shot a video, which was your first yeah. interview. How, how did that go for you? That I was nervous. I was very scared, but it was good. It was like my first interview. So it was good, though. I'm proud. happy I did it. Yeah. You know? yeah. And then ever since then, I mean, he showed up fresh to death like he is today. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah. But we kind of output develop a crush on him. He likes our stuff. But we were so proud that since then, he is a two-time Grammy winner. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> first best rap album with Cardi B and then best R&B album with H.E.R., um, and tonight we're going to go over a track I hope all of you know. And if you don't, it's probably playing in the radio. It's <laughs> Ring by Cardi B featuring Kehlani, which has gone two times platinum. So that's a lot of plays. Yeah. <laughs> Thank cool. You. Um, so let's just dive into a little bit about your background. How do you even start in music? How did I start music? Um, my friends in the background there will tell you. Um, I used to rap first. So I just used to rap and in school and that was just like rap i used to mc because it was grime those times and um we just could never get beats i done like a remix to a song that we did and it was really bad but i kind of just fell in love with making the beats and i kind of just stopped emceeing and kind of just started working on producing and that was it from there i've just kind of been going on more of that so that was the how old were you at the time and what did you start off with? Are you, uh, you have Fruity you Loops up funny, here. Yeah? But so I started off with Fruity Loops and then I moved and it's only now that I got back to it. Um, but yeah, I was probably around, I say 16 when I started, 16, 15. So I'm 25 now, so that's like 10 years. So yeah, I'll say like 15, 16. And so when did you realize that music was your calling and you really wanted to kind of dedicate yourself to this as a career? I remember it. I did a song um, with a good friend of mine, Dio, um, called Reload by Wiley. And um, I had produced a song. I didn't know anything about music or, whatever, or not music, like the music business. And it went number seven. Um, and they gave me a production fee, by the way. And I was like a little guy. They paid me some money and I just like lost my mind. So from there, I was like, whatever this is, I'm going to do this. Because, <laughs> yeah, I mean. But, um, yeah, just seeing, I had a lot of creative people around me. And I got to see, like, them do music and, like, how they were able to, like, chase their dreams. And that kind of inspired me to just take my shot at it. So now we're here. And that happened when you were still quite young. I think yeah. you said you missed an exam to do oh, some such that sessions. Story. Yeah, I had exams. I went to like a school and I got invited to Stockholm, Sweden by um, the good people at Warner Sweden. And I just like, I told my mom I was on like, what was it? Would you call it those times? Like when you like have a holiday or whatever. I told her it was that. Spring break, at least in America. Like, yeah, you, that's the American version. But we had that... Um, and I went to Sweden and I missed my exams. And from there, that was, to be honest, before the Wiley thing, that was like the first thing that I kind of saw. And I was just like, do you know what? I'm going to, this is what I want to do. I came back, got in loads of trouble, but I was like, they liked my music. So, you know, we have that. So, I think it was well worth the rest, don't you think? Yeah. A couple uh, of Grammys. Yeah. <laughs> missed on the exams. I think I think your mom's happy with yeah. how things turned out. So. Um, and so why don't we dive into the session? Uh, yeah. It was almost immediately after our interview in yeah. our offices. I was like, so what are you up to next? And you told me. Yeah, I was, like, I was trying to work with Cardi B and Kalani and like trying to do a song. And I was at like, my first session in L.A. Um, with this song. I kind of like, I was saying to my manager, like, you know, I kind of want to do some, like, I hate to use this word, but, like, urban-type sessions because I was doing, like, a lot of, like, electronic music at the time. And I came here, and this was the first song we made. So, like, that was a good experience for me going to LA. So tell us about the room. You know, did your manager set up a session? You guys were in the studio. How did... How so did it, was a, it was start? a studio. I was a little bit late, 
because believe it or not, that I never really used to use Uber those times. So I was like, I used Uber and I got an Uber pool by accident. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, they took me to the other person's destination first. And I got to the studio and it felt like this in a sense that there was loads of people in the studio and I was just trying to find like my little corner. I found my corner. I didn't even speak. I said hello and who, I just started playing. <laughs> the, who, who was in the room with you? Um, so Nija, who I wrote the song with. Um, She's a Deez, songwriter. Yeah, yeah songwriter. Um, Needles, who I co-produced it with. And both of their managers and some A&Rs and... To the other people that I don't remember who they were, were but they Cardi were Cardi and Kehlani in the room at they this wasn't. point? They wasn't. Never, I've never actually met Cardi B or Kehlani, which is like crazy. But um, yeah, there was a lot of people in the room and I kind of just found my little corner and kind of set up my laptop. So I would say that both Cardi and Kehlani have very unique, strong voices yeah. in, in their craft and in their art. What's yeah. it like producing a song for people that you weren't in the room with? Um... Do you know what? The interesting thing is that I kind of never have them in mind when I'm working on the songs. I kind of just like work freely and just like try to do my take on it and then whatever happens to the song from there. I just try to do the best I can and then like I hope like it reaches people who can appreciate what I've done. All right, so we're going to go back. You were in your corner and so how did the music, did you guys listen to some songs together? (laughs) Yeah, it was like... I don't know who said it, but it became like play songs that you've produced or you got coming. Almost like you had to show yourself, yeah. So I was like, cool. It was me first. (laughs) And I just like played some music that I had produced. I had like the Her song uh, and I played that and they were like, almost like, all right, we approve, (laughs) so to say. And then everyone played music. But that was good because it kind of built like, energy in the room and then from there it was like all right now let's make music like the music everyone's played and literally the first thing i played was like the main sound in this song and then yeah we kind of just loaded it up and we started making the beat can we hear it and then let's go over to how you found the sound okay got to get the record on so you guys can watch <laughs> it back later. do you want to hear the song or the the demo version or the real song yeah but explain the process okay so we don't even know what sound it is what sound was it that you started with and tell us how you came about using it so it was that um i found this on youtube there's this guy called Desmond Dennis. Big shout outs to him. He does like vocal covers and cool things with his voice. And I just heard this before I came to LA actually. And I was like, I kind of like that. Cut it up. And I had had that there, but I didn't do anything with it. So like... What song was he covering? <clears throat> I'm not too sure what the actual song was, but he was just doing covers. And then he does his own thing. Like, like he like starts with a song and does his own that thing he, what he does is really sick so you can check it out but yeah that was that and i kind of just like i heard that and i was like i'm gonna use this for something i'm not too sure what it was so do you save clips and notes for possible sessions do you know what just because it was la i was a bit scared i can't lie it was my first like time there so i was like i'm gonna put some things that i just feel like i like or that i could possibly like pull up if all things are going bad and this is i just played so Come prepared to a songwriter yeah. session. I like, kind of like to vibe with everyone in the room, but this was like, just like little things that could just like spark inspiration. We're all about sparking inspiration today. So yeah. we have the vocal sample and then yeah. what happened? Was it the songwriter or your co-producer who was like, okay, let's let's run with that. Yeah, I mean, I played it like like this, yeah. And I stopped it and was like, what was that? What was that? What was that? Play that. So I kind of played it. I already had it locked into a tempo. And we started building the drums from there, actually. Can we play those? So t- tell me about tempo choice. Was this the original from the cover or? No. I think I slowed it down just a little bit and I ch- pitched it up. I'm going to get real technical, but I took out some of the lower frequencies in it. And I think I added like a little bit of a flanger effect on it. So I kind of just wanted to make it sound a little bit different. But um, 
yeah, I, I did that and I kind of just left it at that. I don't know. Like, what, that's what I had with it there. So I kind of just looped the first, I made a loop out of it and just kept that going. And then we built like the drums around that. Completely what it sounds like with the. So that was going on. That was actually going on for like a good 10 minutes. Just that. Like, and. Um, Let's go into the drums. When you're co producing with somebody, yeah. how do you kind of delegate roles or do you look for each other's specialties? Like, are you more of the melodic person and Needle's more rhythmic or. It was it was interesting because we kind of never had like a conversation. It was kind of just like we started making the beats. So it's like it would be like he done a kick and I done a snare and he done a hi hat and I done another hi hat. It was like competition, but not really. So we're just kind of trying to fill out the track, really. But we did. He started doing the the drum groove, and then like he was using like an interesting like old school way of producing. He had like an MPC. So I kind of just like worked with him on that way and we kind of figured out the main drum loop. So if you see the kick and snare is actually together over here. This is all from the MPC. So we had that. Um, and I see that you added more snares and the yeah. hi-hats. Yeah, so I added a snare. He had this hi-hat loop. Added additional hats and... So it was like, cool. One thing I respect that he was like, with me, sometimes I can like keep going on a track. He was like, no, 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 drums are cool now. So we kind of just moved away from there and kind of tried to find like sounds that would like complete the track and structure. A bit of editing. And so yeah. with your sort of like drum sounds, yeah. do you... Well, how do you collect your sounds? Do you kind of have folders for different artists yeah. or, you know, a lot of people, their, their snares are special to them and yeah. their hi-hats are special to them. What is your kind of sound design or sound curation process like? It's it's like working with producers is like drum sounds is everything. So it's kind of like I've collected, if I lost my hard drive, I would cry because it's like I've collected sounds from like meeting people, buying sounds online making some once but do you like, remember where these ones were from no <laughs> i don't even know where they're from too. i have so many like you, I, I i couldn't even remember where they're from but yeah oh so once needles was like we're good on the drums yeah um you had the vocal sample the drums and then yeah. what did you move on to bass There's actually two bases here. I kind of said to him, I didn't want to use the 808 because I thought like that was very typical for us to do in like, you know, R&B song and just have 808s. Not that I'm against it because I have songs that have 808s, but I was like, we should try something different. So I opened up Omnisphere and I added like this side chain low sub bass. And then... So what did you use from Omnisphere? Um, this bass is called the... Taurus Rezo Blink Bass. Um, I play it on solo. So it's kind of it's the same frequencies as the 808, but it's just not moving as the 808. Um, so is that why you did the side chain? Yeah, just so it felt a little bit different. And it's like, it's more like something from an electronic song you do like EDM stuff and then there's like a Khalid bass because I've used it in loads of Khalid songs but this I just took the there's no low end in that because I just took out all the low frequencies and kind of focused on the higher frequencies in this I think I said that in our yeah. album video I do that a lot so can you tell us what you use to kind of edit the sounds that you um found? just like I use the stock EQ for that, um, I did this bass in Logic. I think I actually have it. Um, I just used like the stock EQ, took out the lower frequencies for that because I, I noticed that the bass weren't really coming through. Um, like when you're listening on like your phone or like in the car or places where people can't really 
hear things in a full on recording studio. Um, I just wanted you to be able to hear the notes from the song that we're doing. So I did that and it kind of helped. And is that something that you tend to do with your bassist? Like you said, you did the same thing. Thing in the with Kalei the lead, yeah. Kalei Whenever I can, if I hear it, if I hear it. And um, recently, I've been trying it with 808s as well, just to give it like a little touch at the high end. I think it it makes a big difference. And I kind of wanted I wanted to make my point clear that I really did not want this to sound like an 808. So I kind of put that it's more EDM influenced, I'd say. And both of the bases are side chain at the same, so it feels. I play it together with the track, see what it feels like. See, without the high frequency, you don't really hear the bass, and then it kind of cuts through a little bit clearer when you have the high frequency, so. And with bass lines as a kind of trial and error as you're listening 100%, 100%. to. 100%. This was a good day, though. Everything was kind of just coming together very quick. So, but yeah, bass is definitely trial and error most of the time. Yeah. Right. So we have vocal sample, drums, then bass. And yeah. Then, then um, we were kind of like, all right, this is cool. I kind of felt like, kind of felt, because I had used the vocal sample and that was the main part of the song. I kind of felt like I was cheating. And I felt like I needed to like play some things and just like have some stuff that I like didn't take. No, I ain't got anything against sampling, but I, it was my own personal. So You have uh, to have the scribes attached to it. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is where it got fun. I opened. Contact. Hmm, looks yes. familiar. Ooh, what's what's this plugin over here? What what could this be? Oh look! Uh oh! Oh, surprise, surprise! <laughs> but yeah, I opened um, Signal, which you guys know. Um, I started playing like the piano. I was actually looking for a piano, and I pulled this up, and I was like, okay, this kind of sounds better than a piano because it's doing a little bit more than the piano. So I. Played. And that kind of goes through for the chorus, it only comes on the second half. Um, I did that because there's like a step chord sequence in the song, so I kind of wanted that moment to shine a little bit more. So I done that and I added another sound layer of that from Rev. pretty short but it's like it's got like a reverse to it i was like okay so you layered pian quote unquote pianos from signal yeah. and another layer of rev so yeah. tell talk to me about the choice behind that why wouldn't you kind of use a more straightforward piano um i was just like i was trying to find sounds that, that i wouldn't normally use and like when i had opened the signal i knew i was i was just trying to find different sounds it was like I was like new to using Signal and I was like, let me just try this. And when I played the piano, I was like, okay, cool. This sounds. Was it a preset or did you mess around it was, with the It was a part? preset. The piano was a um, preset. Let me see if I tweaked it. So we're taking a look at preset 133 simple piano loops. Yeah. And then. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I kept this exactly the same. <laughs> and I was that, just that's like, cool too. Yeah. I as was long like, as you like it. Yeah. I was like, cool. I just did that. But with the rev sound, um, I know it had like, it had some, I remember taking off the delay, I think it had, and I just like messed with the release just so it was following the piano exactly, but yeah, it was working, man, it wasn't broken, I wasn't trying to fix it, especially in that time, and everyone was watching us make the beats, by the way, like this, it was like a performance, like, yeah, what so, are you doing next, what are you doing next? Yeah, so, um, once I had those sounds, I added one more sound from um serum which is kind of like so together it just kind of sounds like yeah in the track i'll play it all together So 
if you see, it only comes on the second half because I wanted to kind of make that bit stand out a bit more. So yeah, those were the sound choices for those. But when we did that, they were like, it was like, okay, cool. It kind of sounds like it's got everything it needs. There were some additional sounds like leads and stuff, but it, at that point it became more about song structure and like making a structure that was easier to write to and form the song from there. So we just started structuring the song. So let's talk about structure. Yeah. Um, so as a producer, you're serving um, an artist and perhaps a songwriter before that so yeah. that you leave room for the artist to uh, put their lo- vocals on. Are there certain things that you do to the production and yeah. certain parts of the song to allow for that? Absolutely. I felt like we had this going on and I felt like it could get annoying at times. Just hearing the same thing over and over again. So when it got to the verses... Like, I pitched it down an octave just so, like, you're not hearing the same loop over and over again. And when you pitch things down an octave, it kind of, like, I don't know, it messes with the quality or whatever. So what it did, it just left more room for, like, vocals and space for the writer to hear melodies and hear ideas. So for the verse, I kind of wanted to bury the main vocal loop as much as possible. So it's, like you can hear what's going on more and then by the time it get, it makes the chorus feel bigger as well because there's feels there's less going on in the verses and more going on in the hook so that was definitely a conscious choice did you pitch it down an octave because you knew you were working with female voices or you just knew that mm. you wanted to keep it original not at all. for the verse and then yeah no i just felt like i didn't want it to be a constant loop of the same thing going on so i was like I'm not about to go sing additional notes, so I better just pitch it down. But yeah, I kind of like, I like to do that a lot. It kind of like, you know, it makes it feel like more of a journey than the same thing, just looping over and over again, so. Do you want to talk about any other elements of the track? Um, Any other elements of the track? I'd say that was the main elements of the track. This is probably the most simplest beat that's ever been made, believe it or not. So um, that was the, after that, we had kind of, just let Nija do her thing in the booth and yeah. And was there any back and forth? So, you know, you made a simple beat that everyone was yeah. very happy with and vibed with. And then after the songwriting process for the melodies and the leads, what happens from there? So usually once we've done the song, I usually like to do like post production and um kind of done they kinda finished the song and I heard the song and I was like, Okay, cool, like I can't wait to work on this. Sometimes I'd be like trying to work on songs that don't need work. And then my manager somewhere here, I was like, yo, I need to get the vocals. I need to, you know, I need to make sure the drums is knocking. This that. Just, it's fine. It sounds fine. And then like, this, how it was in the session is how it ended up coming out. So I never got to do no post-production, but I'm kind of happy I didn't because I probably would have just ruined it. So I'm like, yeah, that was the version that came out. And that taught me that less is more, like, so much. Like, so now I'll be making beats, like, yeah, it's finished. And, you know, it might not even so, be finished, but I'm like, <laughs> that's what works, isn't it? It's hard. But, um, yeah. So in another situation where, you know, the rest of everybody that makes a song happen doesn't go, yeah, we're, we're, we're done. Yeah. How How does that sort of... I'm finished with the track work or do you always feel the need to like, oh, I'm going to work with the vocal and the post-production. How do you kind of stop on your own and make that decision? It's, it's for me, it's just feeling like you just kind of get like a, I don't know how it works. Like you work on a song, you hear the same thing over and over again. You get tired, but there's just like a moment where it's just like, I don't even know if it's finished. I kind of just like, yeah, surrender. Like, man, I've been working on this song for years. Like, it's it's finished kind of thing and it's like for me it's like not when i finish it's like okay i'm ready to hear an outside opinion on this so it's more so like i'd send it to my manager or let my friends hear it and then i'll see what their opinion is and if everyone if i wait for like the i'm addicted to hearing negative comments because it's like okay now i have something to kind of build from but um yeah i kind of just kind of say this is at a level of which I'm proud of and I just like send it to see opinions and if everybody's happy with it and I'm happy with it then it's good to go. 
I'm surprised that you said that you're addicted to negative comments. So yeah. what do you take with those? And obviously it's people that you trust to give them to yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. That's a very, yeah. Not just everyone's negative comments, by the way. I just, um, yeah, I don't know. It gets to a place where you've been making music for so long in the nicest way possible. I feel like I don't make bad music anymore. So it's never going to be like terrible, but it's like, I mean, like, I'm always like, all right, but is this amazing though? Or is this like different enough? Is there anything I can do to change? Or because usually I would have maxed out my ideas. And so I'm usually, if someone says, this is cool, but I would, you know, I would make it half time or I would use a different sound. I'll turn that down. Kind of get, gets me excited. And I'm like, yeah, something I didn't hear or oh, I thought to do that, but I didn't do it. So, yeah. I'm, addic- not, I'm not like I hate like this is really bad why do you write this song I don't like those comments it's more so like room for improvement you know constructive improvement. yeah constructive criticism and so I take it that this song however was just very positive once you yeah. kind of wrapped it even though you might not have thought that you were finished yeah with this it. is honestly I'm so proud of this song just the process alone it was like making the beat um, that's what was interesting when we had finished the beat Shout out Nisha. They it was like it was a different way of working. Usually, as I'm making a beat, I will sit with the writer and they'll kind of like build as we go. So like they'll be writing a song. So by the time I'm like finished with the track, they kind of got something. But it was just like I was kind of. It felt like I was in my bedroom. I was just making the track and no one said anything. So I thought everyone hated it. And then I was a bit. I was about to start another track and. She was like, wait, are you ready to put that one in? And I was like, okay. She just said she likes people to just finish and then she'll go in the booth. And then she done it. And I was like, okay. I thought you hated it. So that was like... Did you get to listen to it after she was done? So it was a very separate process between you and the songwriter? Yeah, it was definitely... I got to judge her, which was like nice. I got to be like, yeah, listen and be like... But yeah, she done it really quick. And shout out to Nija. That was like very quick. And we kind of heard it. I was like, all right, this is really good. And we kind of just took it from there. It was a good, it was a good, it's probably one of my favorite sessions I've had, so. Was it your favorite because it mimicked the vibe of you producing on your own? How do you usually like to produce? I think it's different at all times. I kind of just, I enjoyed the process of like feeling like I had to like, I was under pressure to perform, which was like, I kind of, I, that kind of excited me in a creepy way, but I had to like really bring my A game, so to say. Um, there was people in there that I didn't know, like people I'd never met before. I, I'd never met anyone in the room before. And it was like, it's interesting when you're put in a room with strangers and it's like, yeah, go in a room with strangers and make a song, like give a piece of yourself and mix it and give us an MP3. So it was like, that was an interesting process to just go in there and just try to do my best. And yeah, I kind of like, that was that was like the process of making the song to what it resulted in in the end. I was just like, I'm proud of this song for the process, the product and how it was done and how the artist delivered their vocals on it and like the video and everything. So I'm really proud of it, man, from that beginning stuff. So that first time you and Nyjah and Needles listened to kind of her take, did you know that you had a banger on your hands? Do you know what? Yeah. I knew about the song for like a year. So I was like, when is it coming out? Like Cardi would be like, I got a new song coming out Friday. And I'll tell my friends like, yo, like Friday. And then I remember there was one time she, we thought like she was dropping it and then all we heard was, I like it like that. And I was so pissed. I was so pissed. I was like, this is not coming out. I need to get a job. All these things. But um, it came out. It's crazy. I was. I remember I was in LA and I went on YouTube, no other of a lie, just to like check. And I saw Ring Cardi B video. And I was like, I was so excited. I didn't even watch it. I just called my manager. I was like, ah, it's out. And I kind of like, I watched it and I was like, oh wow, this is like, it really happened. It's really out. There's a video and everything. So from there, it was just like, it was a sick moment, man. But I was like anticipating it for so long. I'm kind of happy that it caught me off guard, you know? So it was, it was definitely a good time. 
And that is how a two times platinum song is made. <laughs>